Hello everyone, this is Mayuki. In last video, we talked about the things you can do at Mother Base in Second Galaxy. Today's video, I'm gonna talk about the stuff about wormhole, including basic knowledge and advanced tips. The picture shown in here is a catalog for you to choose a part that you want to watch. All right, let's get started. Because wormhole is where most of everyone's equipment comes from, explore it. It is very important. Or you can get out of a wormhole are basically all types of cases, and decrypting cases is an important part of the game. So let's talk about how to decrypt cases properly. First of all, there are slots locked here, and I need to unlock the slot with red coins, since unlocking them allows you to be continuously decrypting cases for a long time. I recommend that you unlock the slot as early as you can. First, the case is divided into two types. One is implant case. Another is a blueprint case for various items, including weapons, ammo, components, and so on. However, there is no restriction on equipping implants, so the preference is to open the implant case. And then we look at the size of the case. If it's M, it takes an hour and a half. S takes an hour. XL takes six hours. Then, if you were online during the day, you can firstly put cases like S and M in front to improve the efficiency of acquiring items. Put the large case in front before you go to bed at night. So when you wake up and start the game, you can open the big case. Then about the rarity, must be the high rank first. In conclusion, priority is given to decrypting the high rank implant exercise case, then the high rank blueprint exercise case, then low rank big size blueprint case. You can adjust it according to your requirements. Exploring wormhole is one of the most effective ways to collect resources. Exploring wormholes mainly provides you with supply cases that contain blueprints of ships, weapons, devices, and components. You may also get contraband storage cases, credited vouchers, and minerals. Picture here shows the basic knowledge of wormhole. You can pause to watch it. Go to map and select wormhole level in the filter. You will find their entries. Notably, if another player enters a wormhole that has the same difficulty as the one you entered, you can fight that player in the wormhole as long as you two use the same type of ships. So when you're playing solo, the wingman you want to bring into the wormhole need to use the same ship type with yours. For example, if I use a destroyer, I switch my wingman to destroyer. If you just switch them in the recruit interface, it's useless. If you go to the wormhole now and he won't go in there with you, be sure to switch at undock interface so he can fight with you in the wormhole. When you enter the wormhole, you will be affected by the distortion effect. Your ship's energy recovery continues to be affected and eventually you will not be able to activate any weapons or equipment. This effect takes about 20 minutes to reach level 10, during which time you can explore wormholes and complete events to earn rewards. Therefore, energy related components and devices are almost a must in the wormhole. About the structure of wormholes, there are four kinds of targets in the wormholes. Three kinds of targets are entrance to regulated space, chaotic space, and exit. Regulated space is very safe, only need to fight with NPC enemy, all PvP action are not allowed. Even if you want to attack other players, you cannot do. Chaotic space is more dangerous, all players could become your enemies. You have to watch out not only for NPC enemies, but also for players. There are also more rewards in the chaotic space, and the distortion effect resets when you enter the chaotic space from the regulated space. So, if you go into the chaotic space, you have another 20 minutes to explore. The left one is the event that we usually spend a lot of time. There are also many types of events. The difference can be seen in this picture, which explains it clearly. The number of events like gamma numbers, beta numbers, these are meaningless. Tap to open the status interface, your buff and debuff are very, very important. And whether or not you're gonna fight with someone in the chaotic space depends a lot on this. If you're lucky enough to get a range, attack, and defend buff this time, 
it would be easy for you to fight with players and NPCs if you're unlucky enough to lose the range and have a wormhole high level distortion effect you better to avoid fighting. Here are some tips for exploring wormholes. The first is the progress of exploration and we know that wormholes have distortion effects which upgrade as time passes. At level 8 energy recovery will be reduced by 50% but at the highest level, it will be 95%. So I recommend that at level 8, you can think about leaving. And by level 10, you have to leave. You won't even be able to choose a warp to the chaotic space entrance, as the video shows now. If you fight with 95 energy dissipated, it will be very, very easy to die. Because you have no energy to use any equipment, you can't use weapon, you can't recharge your shield, you can't even run by using thruster. And I just said getting into the chaotic space and debuff will be reset. That is to say, if we want to maximize the rewards, we should first stay in the regulated space, clearing the event in regulated space as much as we can until the debuff to be level 8, then enter the chaotic space before the debuff reaches level 10, reset the debuff and giving us another 20 minutes to explore the chaotic space. And speaking of a buff area, there is a buff that will reduce your distortion effect. That means you get another 6 or 7 minutes of wormhole time with that buff. There are also mine areas where there is no fighting, just mining. And in the mine area, you can have your wingman hit the mines that need to be attacked and you can interact with the other mines by yourself so you don't need to waste energy with weapons. In conclusion, when we enter the wormhole, firstly we stay in regulated space clearing events until debuff gets level 8, and then enter chaotic space, debuff reset, do 2 or 3 events after entering the chaotic space, then enter the buff zone, get the buff, if you're lucky enough, debuff reset over again. Finally, when the debuff is approaching level 10, we can go to the mining area and enjoy the mining. After getting all the minerals in that area, we can go home. If the flight report of this trip indicates that your wormhole exploration lasted more than 35 minutes, you can see that your wormhole exploration was successful. The cases you get depends entirely on your luck. Also, if you're lucky enough to have 3 or 4 constant buffs in the wormhole, that exploration would be much easier. Next is the ship type. As mentioned earlier, the enemy in the wormhole is related to the type of your ship. Should I use a big ship or a small one? My suggestion is the small. Specifically, frigate, destroyer, and cruiser. The cruiser is already the biggest that I recommend. There are two reasons. The first is that the small ship is fast, so it is faster to interact with the target and moving, which means that the small ship can clear more events in the same time. The second is that the cost of the small ship is low. Its license is easy to get, even if it's destroyed, you can afford its cost. Frigate is the perfect type for newbies to practice wormhole exploration. But if your battleship destroyed in wormhole, at least 2 million white coins is gone. Not to mention the high level items equipped with. You'll need extra ammo before you head out to explore the wormhole. Click on the ammo to see the ammo capacity of each weapon, such as this, 3 weapons, it's 900, so in addition to the original ammo, I'm gonna take an extra set of 900 multiply 3, which is at least 2700, and put them in the cargo space. All 3 weapons will reload automatically when they run out of ammo. We already know that if your wingman's ship is the same type as yours, he will fight with you. And you can see the yellow circle around it is his armor. If his armor runs out, he will blow up and go home and wait for you to repair him. And a wingman behind him will come and replace him. So when you notice that his armor is running out, just click on him and he'll warp out and just after 1 minute and he'll come back with full of armor. Very practical. The wingman's presence makes wormhole exploration much easier, so be sure to keep an eye on the wingman's health and let them to help you. Finally, and most importantly, be sure to guard against attacks from other players in chaotic areas. Never think that this person might be friendly, that this person might not hit me. Don't 
don't have that naive thought. If you encounter a player in a chaotic area and he doesn't attack you, he might be trying to save power and clear events, or he might be in bad status. If you're hit by an NPC, that makes you nearly run out of your armor and you're within his range of attack, he will attack you because you will drop loot. So in the chaotic area, it's important to always guard against the approach of other players. And I'll explain how to do this later. And we will have warp protection when you warp. So you see the effect. As long as you don't use any device and weapons, you're invisible. However, some novices will turn on the shield recharger as soon as they see another player, so that the enemy can be able to attack you instead. But you will be safe as long as you continue to warp to another area with this buff. As a rookie, just don't be panic, okay? Next is about config. First of all, speaking of PvP, we need to introduce the basic knowledge of gank and nanny gank. If we look at the panel of the ship, there is a perimeter warp stability, and you can see that it is one point. If it's less than one, then you can warp. You can live away from enemies, or you can move to another area. So how do you gank people? Open the store to the extended interference, slide down, and you will see long range warp disruptor. Long means 30 km range and one point disrupting strength. And there is a short range warp disruptor on the side, 15 km, two point strength. Now let's call them LWD and SWD. And two point strength has an additional effect. If you're disturbed by two, you will not be able to use the jump flash engine. When ganking people in the warm home, we usually use SWD, which has a range of 15 km. Considering the reaction time, let's set the safe range at 20 km. What happens when I use it against someone? He has one warp stability, we have two disruptions, one minus two is minus one, so he can warp. If I use the LWD, one minus one is zero, he still can warp. So how can he warp? Let's open the store to the component, to the piloting enhancer. There is this thing called warp core stabilizer, which gives you one point warp stability. And there is a warp core cover on the side, which gives two point warp stability. But it has the side effect of lowering the range of your weapon. So if I have one warp stabilizer in my ship, and someone used LWD to me, then two minus one is equal to one, and I can warp. If he uses SWD, two minus two is zero, and I still can warp. Then I use warp cover, so 3 minus 2 is 1. Whatever he uses, I can always warp away. So, to explore a wormhole to go into the chaotic area, you have to have this. If you don't have this, then you have to make sure the other player is 20 kilometers away from you. If you don't have this and you keep the enemy close to you, don't blame on me when you lose your ship. As for the recommended configuration, my favorite ship for exploring wormhole is the Cold Ring of RS, which is almost the most efficient ship for exploring wormholes in the whole game. Why him? Let me tell you. First, let's look at these technical components. Each use of weapon and device will reduce the CD of all devices and weapons by one second. Oh my god, this is awesome. And if you look at this license bonus, there's a lot of bonus to the real gun. As you see, the real gun's cooling is less than 5 seconds, which is pretty good. So if you use a weapon, you can get your other devices to recover from the CD very quickly, and then you use the device again, you can get other weapons and devices to recover over again. They're all reducing CD from each other. In this way, the three real guns would be fired like machine gun. And then we look at the device, two energy rechargers and one shield recharger because the weapon is firing too fast so the energy consumption is very fast so we need two re energy rechargers and if you only use one that's probably not enough about defense a shield recharger and a repairer generally enough in component slots one energy recovery augmenter and two real gun damage amplifier energy recovery augmenter is used to enhance the effect of recovering energy you might ask, why don't you use two energy recovery augmenter components? 
then one energy recharger device and change another slot to damage enhancer. Since the device is active, but the component is passive, when you fight, the energy recharger's CD will be reduced, so you will have more energy. If you replace it with the damaging enhancer, then you only have one energy recovery device, but all of the other weapons and devices are consuming energy. So the endurance of firepower will be very poor, and you will often run out of energy, especially in places like Wormhole. So this is my recommended config for Wormhole. You can adjust the rank of all these equipment as long as it does not exceed the maximum processor and power. Alright, this is today's video. Thanks for watching. If it helps you, please like and subscribe. I will talk about PvP related things in next video. So see you next time.